Hello and welcome to another episode of Senior Spot. My name is Jen Quinn and I'm very happy today to be hosting Renee Noel Kaimig, who is the PT and Director of Partnership Services with 365 Rehab. So I'm assuming 365 days of rehab around the clock. Well, we're gonna get more on the name of it, but in particular, there, that Renee is gonna be able to tell us about a very unique way of delivering physical therapy. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm, I'm so here. excited to be here. So 360 Rehab 365. Yes. So I flip-flop the name. So Rehab 365. So what is what's the significance say behind the name of it? Yes. So um, thank you for asking because everybody assumes 365 days I know. a year. So I knew there was more to um, it. And the first time I heard it, I assumed the same thing also. So um, but it is not. <laughs> um, so surprise twist. Um, we do three things. So we do physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech services. Um, we're outpatient, um, and we specialize in senior care, otherwise known as people 65 and older. So that's why we have a three for the three things that we do, and 65 for the age group that we're most often working to support. Okay, that is extremely clever. I love it. I love finding out the, the, the reason behind the name. So yep. yes, you would automatically assume it's 365 days a year, but I like that. So three services, which we're going to get into talking about in more detail, yep. for our population that's typically 65 and older. Yep. So. Um, a lot of people know that there's physical therapy, there's inpatient, there's outpatient, but tell us a little bit about, you know, what's unique about the services that, that you deliver and, you know, why it might be really great for the audience to know because a lot of people are asking about this type of service. Yes, yeah, so um, as I mentioned a minute ago, we are outpatient and it's outpatient mostly as it relates to the billing of our services. So we are not a visiting nurse service. So um, visiting nurse services that come into the home, you have the option of having a nurse coming in, a home health aide, and then you get access to therapy services. However, um, in order for someone to qualify for those services that would have Medicare as their insurance or a private insurance, you have to meet home, certain homebound criteria. Meaning through, that you need to have it delivered within the home setting versus going to outpatient where you can leave the home and receive the same services. Correct. And they're just there are just set things that each insurance company has or that Medicare would have that, um, for example, um, typically homebound status is you're going out for the bare minimum amount of things. So you might have to go out to the pharmacy to get your medications. You can attend church services. Um, but there are very limited things that you're kind of able to do because um, you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm stuck at home and I need somebody to come to me. Sure. But what we've seen um, as we've been out and about supporting seniors is that there are a lot of people that don't necessarily meet the homebound criteria per their insurance. Um, however, they need to have services come to them. And it might be because they don't have access to transportation. Um, it might be because um, they get distracted very easily and they have a hard time hearing, um, or maybe they're not seeing so well. So it's much more um, beneficial for that person to have services in a space that's familiar to them. Okay, and familiar meaning what's most familiar would be? Would be your home. Exactly. Um, but what another thing that's really unique um, is that we are outpatient. Um, so our, we're really looking to support people where they need services and giving them the services when they want them. Um, so we can see someone in the home. We're also able to see people anywhere in the community where it might be beneficial for oh, them to so, receive care. Yeah, so give me some examples uh, of that because, you know, it's kind of like w when you said that, what popped into my head is where you needed your windshield replaced. Remember, it used to have to be right, you know, right yes. in your driveway. Well, yes. now <laughs> they'll replace it anywhere. So tell us a little bit yes. about this unique feature. Yes, so um, for example, uh, there might be somebody that we're seeing. Um, there was a gentleman I was working with. He had gotten his knee replaced and we started out doing care in his home. Um, he, you know, I did talk to him, I said, go out, check out outpatient facilities, like a true clinic setting, see if that's something um, that you'd be interested in. He had previously been attending his own gym. And um, we have, for patients that are near, so we presently have a clinic that's in Amesbury, Mass. So we have so a yes, gym So yes, I'm setting. glad that you're mentioning that because we want to also mention that you do actually have a physical location as well. Yes, so people can come to us in Amesbury. Um, we're actually opening a second clinic in Salem, New Hampshire that's gonna happen 
later this year, um, sometime fall of 2017. This gentleman that I'm referring to, he wasn't anywhere near close to our Ames Prairie Clinic, which is why I had said to him, you know, go check out other clinics, see if it's something that you're interested in. And he said, no, you know what? I used to go to Planet Fitness down the street. Um, is that something you can help me with? Like, can you get me back to the routine that I was doing? And I, absolutely. So we check with the space, uh, went into Planet Fitness to make sure it was gonna be all right to go to be seeing this gentleman there. And yes, fine. Um, so, so, you were, so you were able to get him back into the reality of what his what his goals were so what was realistic to him yes in order to in in, in reference to what he wanted to achieve Correct. which is different than doing something at home when you know he's motivated to do something so that's so interesting that the setting does not have to be at home correct um, so another really neat story um, there was a woman that we were working with she had really severe arthritis so what had happened over time is it got worse and worse she had stomach issues so she wasn't able to take pain medications so we were able to go in, work with her in her home, work on ways that she could really learn to manage the pain that were outside of any type of medication. Um, and she was very limited. She hadn't been able to food shop because she couldn't figure out how to physically get cans wow. off the shelf. And then, and then even to carry the bags and then to put them away in the cabinets. Yep. Sure. So we cannot transport patients ourselves to a place, but we can meet people anywhere that they'd like to have care. Um, so we were able to meet her at a grocery store and literally work on what it's actually going to look like for you to be able to grocery shop. Wow. And she's able to grocery shop again. So it's just, it's really like taking it a step farther um, in what we're doing and looking at what can we really do to make a difference for the people that we're working that's, with. That's incredible. I mean, then that means there's no restrictions on on how how you rehab. Correct. You know, because everybody rehabs in a different way. It's yep. not a one size fits all. You want people to be able to, like I said, get back to the goals that they have, which your goals and my goals might be completely different. Yep. That woman's goal was to be able to grocery shop. Some people would avoid grocery shopping as much as they possibly could. Absolutely. But which for is, her, it yes. was important, you yep. know, and other people wouldn't want to be going to the gym like the other gentleman and, and other people like him. He's very motivated to do that. So Well, and she was also, I mean, there's so many layers when you look at working with a person. So she was paying privately for home health um, care services to come in such as yourself but it was really just a major financial strain for her to be able to do that and because of what we were able to support her with she was able to cut back a little bit on the services that she sure. was having to pay out of pocket for um, which for her it was huge in terms of what that meant for her that she was then able to use that income for absolutely um, and then to get back out into the community she was seeing friends again and honestly um, there's no price that you can put on the independence and being able to do things no. on your own That's that's truly priceless. And I mean, we really look so, so these people are kind of outliers, so to speak, of the, the typical type of person that but we're But I like to hear that because yes. that is completely thinking outside the box. Yes. And, and this is just encouraging people to really think about what it means to them. You're not writing up a, a prescription of their, of their rehab as it would be a cookie cutter. Correct. You're really looking for them to become involved in what's going to make a difference in their life. And that's yep. what's going to make them more productive. Yep. You know, so that's, that's really unique. Yeah, and I mean, most often, and you hit the nail on the head, is we're really setting out um, throughout the company, our mission is to make a difference for somebody today. Um, and it's really looking at being different and how we're going at that. Um, so I think you look at what the traditional needs are, and sometimes people don't know. So um, physical therapy, we're most often working with folks to get them stronger, to improve balance, to make sure their home is safe. But there's a lot of things that we can do beyond that that sometimes people are not aware of. So we can work to make sure that medications are appropriately reconciled for a person, to look at what are these different things that you're taking and are these still appropriate for you and sure. having that conversation with a doctor. Um, working to educate people about ways that, let's say you're starting to have cognitive impairments, well what are physical things that you can be doing day to day that are going to make it so that we're improving your cognitive functioning right. as well as educating family members to know, all right, this is kind of what you're seeing with your loved one. This is what a progression could look like or it could not look like that if this, this, and this are followed. So part of the, part of the 365, so the first thing was you mentioned the PT, which I think people are really, they, they understand it, but what you're saying is it goes beyond just your basics. It's, it's really reaching into what they personally need as far as physical therapy um, modifications you know, yep. for their life. So the other two pieces, so if you could 
describe a little bit more about you know the uh, the second and the third piece of the 365 yes so occupational therapy is funny um, because actually you know what I'm gonna talk about speech therapy first you because can. Is, there's think, no order you can yes. put it in any order well, no I because occupational therapy in my mind and to most people is kind of a mishmash of stuff so okay. um, speech therapists um, while they do work on your speech are, are mostly doing kind of two main things so they're working to make sure that cognitively you're functioning well. Um, so there's normal things that happen as we age. It's totally normal to maybe forget somebody's name here and there. Um, oh, you had this appointment that all of a sudden got thrown onto your schedule and, and you forgot about it. And then there's abnormal parts of aging. So forgetting familiar people that we know, forgetting how to do things that are ingrained into your day-to-day -day routine, um, forgetting recent events that just occurred, those aren't normal. Um, when you start to see those linked with personality changes, that's not normal. Sure. So speech therapists are gonna look to evaluate a person to really look at what is their cognitive functioning, what are they understanding, and how are they able to talk back, to communicate back. So I think you're, I think you're right, Renee, a lot of people think it's it's not it's expressive language but it's it's also you know it's expressive language but it's receptive language too Absolutely. what are you taking and this goes back to my education days yes. when I used to teach yeah and I was in special ed so you know it, it's there it's also what you're receiving the receptive language but most people think of speech being literally just what comes out of your mouth not what's being received and processed yeah so um, interesting and I think um, there are more um, different support groups that I've been involved in um, Alzheimer's related support groups where a spouse might come in and say, gosh, you know, my husband, he has these cognitive impairments now and he used to run the business and he is still in charge of the books and I don't know what to do about that. Well, speech therapy is the perfect something for that person to really look at what is this person's ability to be able to do this stuff? Maybe that person isn't understanding at the level that they need to be understanding. And so that's when you say speech and language, that's more of the language piece of it then. Okay. Well, and it's really looking at if that person has the cognitive skills to be doing something that might be a higher skill. Higher functioning. A higher functioning skill. And then on the flip side of that, okay, so maybe we find out after a speech evaluation that that person is no longer capable of doing this, but they're still capable of doing this. And you want them to be doing whatever it is that is within their means to do. So it's so interesting. So when I think, again, going back to the, the typical speech, you think of people doing exercises and the expressive piece of it. So can you give me an example of, I don't know, not, not an exercise or, or yeah, something that, some, that somebody would need to practice? that yes. would help with that. Yeah, so there's there's kind of more basic day-to-day um, -day things that you might think about. So it's keeping your mind active and engaged. Um, so it's literally reading. Reading has been shown to to reduce your risk of having any type of dementia dementia as you age by 50%. Oh, I'm good, I'm never gonna have it. I'm an avid, avid reader, oh, so, so I'm gonna keep good. that going. <laughs> <laughs> um, things like, I mean, there are your more traditional ideas like doing puzzles, um, word searches, or crossword puzzles, or Sudokus, but then there's an even more basic, kind of simple something. Open in the newspaper, going through the newspaper, and anytime you see an E, crossing out an E, or pick any number, that you, okay. any number or letter that you wanna pick. Okay. Um, trying something new and different, and it has, doesn't have to be, I'm gonna pick up this instrument I've never played before, but it could be if every time you get up in the morning and you go downstairs to your cabinets, you always open everything from the left, start on the right, use a different hand to try it out. Um, now would somebody, so if somebody was ready to, say somebody had a stroke mm -hmm. and they were ready to return to the workforce, mm -hmm. you know, is that something that would, you know, when you mentioned going to the gym or you would mention going to the grocery store, would you, would they ever go into the workforce and, and be able to help evaluate if they were ready to return to do such tasks? So that is absolutely something we can wow. do. Um, we haven't done it. Um, so, and I, and I kind of want to touch it because it kind of brings upon something else, which I'm going to come back to because I want to update on what occupational therapists yes, do. Yes, no, we, I won't so, let you forget that. Yeah, so we're occupational therapists. I said they're like the mishmash. So occupational therapists have the ability to work on cognitive skills with a person so they can do a little bit of what speech therapists do. But most often, an occupational therapist is going to help you with day-to-day -day things. So it's your, act, what we call activities of daily yeah. living. Um, so what do you need to do to live every day? You gotta get up, you gotta yep. be able to get dressed. Brush your teeth. You gotta dressed. brush your teeth. Feed yep. yourself, sure. Yep. Yep. Um, take Which a shower. Which th things that we take for granted, to be honest with you, you know, that become really critical in terms of people's recovery. Yep. 
Um, but a really key piece that sometimes people forget about is part of most seniors' day-to-day -day routines is taking medications. Mm -hmm. um, and that's most often something that people that are starting to have cognitive impairments, or even if you don't have cognitive impairments as you're aging, it can be really confusing to understand how to appropriately manage your medications. Sure. And that's something that both an occupational therapist and a speech therapist can help with. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's figuring out what's the right schedule or the right system that we need to utilize so that you're safely gonna be able to take your medications. Do you physically have the ability to open, open right. a pill container? Well, when you mentioned the woman with the arthritis, that could be something that was, is limiting, not because they don't understand that they need to take it, but it's really more the physical aspect of actually opening the bottle or doing whatever it takes yep. to get it open. Yep, so um, those are absolutely things um, that we're helping with. Speech therapists, one thing that we didn't, that I didn't touch upon, the other big piece that they're really helping with is making sure that you can safely swallow. Oh, yes. Um, so a lot of people as they're aging, um, your muscles in, that you're used to swallow can literally get weak in the same way that our bodies can get weak. Um, and a lot of times it's associated with things that happen um, with dementia because as um, our minds are getting affected. Sure. A our, lot of times it's neurological, absolutely. Yep. You know, the swallowing becomes a challenge because yep. it's neurologically based. So um, speech therapists will look to figure out, so things that people might see that are a little bit concerning where it is important to report those things to a doctor or a healthcare provider is if you're starting to drink or you're eating and you're choking as you're doing those things where you're coughing because the risk is that a little bit of that water or liquid or whatever it is or right the food, into your lungs yep. yep and the problem with that is that then you get bacteria and then you develop a pneumonia right um, so those things are really important to let someone know if you're experiencing any of those things um, but our speech therapist can go out and can evaluate sometimes Sometimes it's just modifying what the liquid yeah, the or consistency the consistency of it, sure. Yep, so it might be thickening the liquid, um, or it might just be maybe we can work to strengthen your muscles so that then we don't have to thicken the liquid, or maybe if you swallow in a certain way, the liquid doesn't have to be thickened. See, I don't think, I, I don't think most people would realize that, um, that somebody that was a speech and language pathologist would have that that would be part of what their description is in terms of the services they're providing. Yeah, so I think um, for me, a lot of times in my role, what I'm doing is I'm trying to educate people like, look, we're here to help, this is what we do, because a lot of times families or doctors or whomever it might be are finding that people that they're working with or their loved ones are facing these challenges and they truly aren't sure what to do and where to give people um, information as a resource. So we're here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing because just to think that it's a variety of services that you're able to do, you know, privately in any location. I mean, that's, that's a really unique combination of services. And in my opinion, often I will have, you know, folks that might be coming out of rehab, they're getting, you know, extra assistance at home, they're coming home with OT, PT, maybe even speech, you know, through VNA services, those end. And they say to me, I feel like I can do more. I feel like yes. I want to keep doing more. Mm -hmm. I want to stay on this path. I want the goal of going back to the gym. I want the goal of going grocery shopping or whatever it happens to be. So you get into that place, well, well who do you call up? What do you do? So, um, and I, I really love the idea that it takes place in a setting in which is appropriate for you and your lifestyle. Yes, and I mean, so a lot, you could not have said it more perfectly. So one of the things I was gonna circle more back, circle back to is that we're a very niche type service. So we are not the service for everyone. So if there are people that come home from a rehab and they truly are homebound, they qualify for visiting nurse right. services. Oh, and you absolutely want them to and have as we, much as they can. Yes, absolutely. we want them to get as much care as they can. And then on the flip side of that, we can all think of a person that you look at them and um, their paper age is nothing like their physical age. So someone might say, oh, I'm 85. And you go, oh my God, you look like you could be 50 or 60 because they're still out skiing the Alps or whatever it is that they're doing. They're appropriate for a true outpatient service, and sure. we want them to go to a true outpatient. We're really looking to try to support the folks that kind of 
don't fit into either of those scenarios. So we kind of say we're this sweet spot in between the two that's services. Exactly, that's exactly what I was gonna say, is it's the in-between time. What do you do in between, you know, coming home, getting started, you know, and, and where you ultimately want to be. It's the yep. in-between, and that's where I think a lot of times, like, you know, there's atrophy, there's things that go by the wayside because you're not using them effectively in the way in which you regularly do in your life. So and you are the, you are the in between. Yeah, and I mean you know visiting as you said visiting nurse services will end um, as soon as that person is no longer homebound, and um, there's a lot of people that get to that point, and um, the hope is that they're set up with some sort of outpatient type service, and nine times out of ten that person still needs the extra TLC so to speak um, because they a lot of times the people that we're seeing have kind of become socially isolated where they don't want to be back out in the community yet and there's no way in heck that you're going to get them to go out to a space right. um, and so they still need that extra support so well and, and a lot of times what we see happen is that you know people will you know get the support of family members maybe very close friends and they're not necessarily willing to stick with the protocol or with the exercises or with the things that they should be doing to stay on that same path and improve, but someone else comes from the outside and they'll, they'll do it. And oh my gosh, thank you for saying that. So we work really hard and we're actually in the process of really evolving and developing our services to really be able to focus on set goals that we want to be able to work on as a company um, and as providers because we see the need for that. Um, so exactly what you said people and if you give them to me you give me a list of exercises good luck I'm not gonna do them <laughs> I'm a, so true yeah but you show up I'm gonna be accountable for it I'm gonna do it because you showed up because I you know <laughs> but there's, and there's a piece to that so it's the socialization so we're coming in and we're where it's just different so at least once a day um, socialization and having contact with at least one person a day is so huge literally for your brain. It has the same mm -hmm. effect on your brain as sleep does. Oh sure, just um, anti-anxiety and the, the being uh, able to feel yeah. comfortable and happy. Yeah, so um, we really, as best as we can, try to connect people to that next step something when we're discharging them. So we're, in my role, I'm really trying to go out and learn about as many different community resources that exist free exercise classes, whatever it might be. And before we're discharging a person, we're trying to, as I said, we can't transport them, but we can meet them in a space. So say we go to the senior center and there's a class, will we go with them to that class that first time? Maybe we go two or three times with them to make sure that they're developing the habit and the routine Yeah, and they going. want the comfort level too, that you approve of it, that you think this is gonna be a good way yes. for them to move forward. And we're a comfort level, exactly like you're saying, we know them, and if we have their permission, we'll communicate with the instructor to say, uh, you know, Bob really needs this little bit of extra. Um, you know, talk to him each week because it's going to motivate him to keep coming back. Um, and then if for any reason he stops coming after we've discharged him, give us a call so right. that we can make sure that he's coming back. So um, it's something that we're developing as we're learning more and more of the community resources that we can truly connect people to. Well, because, I mean, I know just in doing what, what I do that there are so many untapped, underused services that are out there yep. and people just don't know how to be connected to them and and they're nervous you think about it, you go let's say you fall you break something you go through the whole ordeal of having surgery going to rehab coming home having vna services mm -hmm. that work really well and then geez i'm not really feeling it i'm not really feeling I, i'm like i'm ready to go back to do x y or z well you can come in and then when you come in you're getting them to that comfort level and then you're actually connecting them to the resources you know, because that's that's why that's why people shy away. That's why people, you know, become more uh, reserved and isolated. And it's the exact opposite of what someone needs to heal. It absolutely is. And I mean, so when you know we are doing those basic things where we are providing the three services: physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. Um, but we've really we're learning a lot. We're constantly doing research because we're trying to make sure that the services that we're providing are really this all around encompassing service to really, as I said, leave the person better than we're finding them. Mm -hmm. So we want to try to touch upon nutrition is a huge, huge problem for so many yes. seniors. You know what? And, and I 
hate to interrupt you, but I cannot have the segment end without asking about oh. your brains, balance, and breakfast. So once you said nutrition, I thought breakfast. Yes. So you have, besides you know being able to do obviously the one-on-one -on -one work, you also do a lot of presenting and educational pieces. So you have this brains, balance, and breakfast. Yes. You know presentation. So can you tell me a little bit about what that? Yes, I can, and thank you for is. remembering <laughs> uh, to bring it up. So uh, brains, balance, and breakfast. Yes, we're. Community outreach and senior education and just overall health and wellness are so hugely important to us. And what we're largely finding is that um, seniors do not have the education and where do they go to find the education? So once a month at different senior centers, uh, we go and we present Brains, Balance and Breakfast. Uh, so the Brains piece is we educate on different topics. Um, the one that we did last month, which was at the North Andover Senior Center, was called Active Mind, Active Body. And we were talking about um, the mind-body connection. So what's good for your mind is good for your body, and what's good for your body is good for your mind. And how do you keep your mind active as you age, and how do you keep your body active, and what does that look like for a person? Um, so we educate on a topic. We do really fun therapist-guided exercises that are touching upon your brain and your body. So it gives um, them something to leave and use and put into pl put into practice. And they're simple. They're things that you can integrate really easily into your day-to-day -day exercise or your day-to-day -day routine. And you get to have breakfast. And you get free breakfast. So in um, the breakfast that we provide is a healthy breakfast. We buy everything from Market Basket. Um, so it has high levels of protein because seniors actually need three times the amount of protein as a younger adult. Huh. There are some caveats to that. So certain things like kidney disease, it's important to monitor your protein intake. Um, but kind of largely as, as a gross recommendation, seniors need higher levels of protein. It's also important for seniors to have higher levels of vitamin D and calcium because it makes our bones stronger. And because falls are the number one cause of injury and fatality for seniors, you might as well make your bones strong so that if you're right. going to have a fall, you're less likely so to break a bone. So then it's an example of a good breakfast that could be duplicated that you want to have. Yes. Okay. Um, so our next month's event is going to be at the Drakett Senior Center. Um, it's going to be on August 24th, and the time, I believe, it's 9.30 to 11.30. So What's, what's um, going to be the focus of that so, one? So, yeah, so it's actually the same topic. It's active okay. mind, active body, um, because it's something that all the senior centers are really interested in. Sure. It's a great combination. I mean, um, you really not want to reinforce with people that it's the mind-body balance mm -hmm. that's going to keep you healthy. You need both to be healthy. Yep. Um, but we do different topics as well. So we talk about dehydration, and we talk about heart health. Um, other ones that we've done, um, keeping your brain fit, so um, it's a similar to the active mind, active body thought process, um, home safety and fall prevention, because I can't say that enough, um, but yeah, so. Well, you know, I, I just think it's, it's very interesting and exciting for the audience to hear that when you get to a certain point, it's not like there's not any more help available, so like you said, I mean, Rehab 365, the three types of therapies for people 65 and older, and you're really a very niche type of group. It's not one size fits all. It's certainly going to be, you know, designated to what their needs are and really help people get back to where where they need to be. So thank you for bringing these services to our senior population. It's wonderful to have you as a guest, and I know that the folks will be able to look up the um, the website that's going to be yes. posted yep. and be able to learn more about the programs you have and more about your services. So thank you so much for coming awesome. in. Awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you that's for great. having me. Thank you.